680 Home Video Channel, a web series where we answer all of your real estate questions. I'm your host, Theodora, and I'm talking to local East Bay real estate broker, Doug Buens. Hi, Doug. It's great to see you. Nice to see you, Theodora. The topic today is termite inspections. So, Doug, what does the average person need to know about termite inspections? Termite inspections, that's actually not the correct name. Um, it's actually a technically called a uh, wood destroying pest and organisms inspection. And it refers to both termites as well as dry rot, which is a wood destroying organism, which is a fungus, and as well as other insects that destroy wood, including beetles. Um, so a pest inspection is a very common part of every transaction here in California. Um, there's two types of termites prevalent in our area. Subterranean termites, which uh, live in the soil, and they attack wood by building mud tubes up from the soil to the wood, and they go back and forth. They eat the wood, digest it, go back for moisture, and go back up. So uh, subterranean termites exist under the subfloor of a house, typically. Um, they are fairly easy to treat. You can treat the soil um, that they live in, and that will um, eliminate the, the termites. The other type of termite would be a, a dry wood termite, and these are termites that swarm in random patterns uh, through neighborhoods. The um, dry wood termites are uh, treated by tenting the house. So if you drive down the street and you see a big, what looks like a circus tent over a house, they're fumigating the house for dry wood termites, and that's the most effective way to treat dry wood termites. There are other treatments, but for transactional purposes, they need to be certain that the termites are treated, so typically it has to be fumigated. Um, a pest inspector, when they do an inspection, will look at several things. They'll look at, at the exterior roof eaves for signs of dry rot. They'll look at the exterior wood trim for the same thing for dry rot. And inside the house, they'll look inside the attic. Uh, they'll check the ceilings of each room carefully, looking for water leaks and potential for, for dry rot there. Um, they'll look very carefully at the bathrooms. They'll check all the tub and shower uh, surrounds and the tile there to make sure there's no dry rot or damage to the tile. Tile. They'll look under sinks for uh, water leaks and damage to the sink area. Um, they'll look uh, at the subfloor and underneath um, the home. They'll look at the drains in the sh uh, tub and shower area. And they'll look uh, for termite tubes uh, underneath the floor as well. Um, when a termite inspector or pest inspector issues a report, they break their findings down typically into three main areas. Section one would be any items where there's active infestation or damage. So if there's active dry rot that's destroyed the wood or there's active termite infestation from either subterranean or dry wood termites, then it would be called a section one item. It means it needs to be treated. In California, typically the seller must remedy any section one items. Section two items are items that are deemed likely to lead to infestation or damage. These are things that are typically more considered preventive maintenance. Uh, it's an area where if you leave the, the situation alone, eventually it will lead to dry rot or infestation. Examples of this would be uh, for instance, soil piled up against wood trim on the side of the house. If you leave, leave soil against wood trim, eventually it will rot out. Or if you have wood trim that's not properly painted or sealed. Or if you have bath, bathroom floors that are not caulked at the seams next to a shower where water can get in, that will ultimately lead to, lead to damage. So those are Section 2 items. Typically, buyers pay for Section 2 items in California. The last um, major section of a pest inspection report would be a further inspection item. And that's where the inspector believes there's a strong possibility there's damage hidden behind a surface. So typically you'll find it in a bath or a shower area where this, the inspector believes there may be uh, dry rot or fungus behind the shower or the surface. In that case, they'll come back out and they'll remove uh, tile or whatever uh, surface there is to peek behind there to see if there's actual damage. If there's damage, it gets reclassified as a Section 1 item and the seller is typically responsible to pay for it. If there is no damage, then the, the termite inspector uh, will repair the surface and return it to its uh, normal condition and the buyer is typically responsible for the cost of that further inspection. Um, the best prevention for 
uh, dry rot and problems associated with it is to keep wood well painted and sealed and keep all bath uh, surfaces and any surfaces that are come in contact with uh, water well sealed and caulked. If you have real estate questions or need assistance, I do hope you'll give me a call. I'm worthy of your trust.